Hello YouTube audience. Today I'm doing a report um, of this uh, Carochia cotomiasta I have. And um, the last video I did a um, first styling of this tree and it was actually very popular. And uh, today is January the 1st, 2021, and uh, it's a bit early for reporting, but um, um, because suddenly uh, our local club has a show that's coming up, so I hope to put this pre-bonsai into a bonsai pot, so I'm kind of taking some risk and uh, report it at this time. Ideally, uh, a tree should be reported in early spring, late winter, February onward, uh, February, March, April, and even May. The ideal time is when the tree start to start to push. You see new buds start starting to swell and the energy start to flow from the storage of the in the root to the top of the tree so that you can start trimming tree trimming the roots without sacrificing the health so it's a bit early uh, in response to that i would need to protect the tree over the rest of the winter, maybe put it in a unheated place um, for it to not freeze. If I've reported it and um, it freeze after that, it probably will significantly weaken or even kill the tree. But I've washed the root. And if this were the correct time to report, I would do a lot more dramatic work on the roots maybe do a lot of pruning uh, and um, so that i can get a flat root plane on the tree but um, i'm not doing that currently i'm still living a significant amount of the root so that the tree can support uh, hopefully support itself during the winter um, and I'm simply going to report it into this bonsai pot, which is larger than it should be, but it's um, for training purpose. So I'm just going to do it in this pot. It's a little bit crowded and um, it's, uh, no, it's a little bit big. But it's okay. I'm just going to set aside the tree a little bit and start to prepare for the for the pot. So I think the pot actually has a front. I think this side it's the mo the best front. So I'm going to take it as the front because this line is the most tidy the tidiest so I'm going to do this as the front and I'm going to prepare the pot only the pot only has one hole so let's see how big is the hole um, from here it looks like About five grids of these grids. So I'm going to cut five and a half. I'm going to cover the drainage 
with the spring. And then I'm going to make a use a wire to stabilize the, the screen. So I'm making twists like that. is quite ugly but hopefully it works so I'm going to put this wire through the hole and try to bend it on the other side so that the screen doesn't move anymore. Okay, so I put the wire through the hole like that and it should stop the drainage from moving. And yes, the drainage doesn't move anymore, so that would be fine, although it's a, a bit ugly, but um, doesn't matter. Now I need to, since this has only one drainage hole, I would need to um, put the wire in in a special way in which I'm going to take a piece of plastic uh, a piece of chopsticks use this chopsticks to tie the, the tree in. Hopefully this would be sufficient I'm going to get two piece of wires relatively small wires and try to tight the piece of chopsticks
uh, a lot of pots, if they were made specific for bonsai, uh, a lot of times they have a a wiring hole. The reason why I'm doing this is this pot doesn't have wiring holes. Um, so I'm trying to provide an anchor to these wires. And the anchor is this piece of chopsticks. And this would be about the size of the the drainage hole and uh, I can simply put this in through the drainage hole This is going to anchor the tree in the pot. And I'm just going to push the wire to the side of the pot for now I'm thinking maybe I should do it on the floor angles of the pot since it has four angles I'm trying to put in mind that this is the front okay I'm trying to remember this is the front and uh, I'm simply going to start filling in soils I'm simply going to use this pre-made soil, a third pumice, a third akadama, and a third lava rock. So, quick and easy soil. That's, um, I simply got on the Superfly Bonsai Supply website. So ideally, I would like the tree to sit in the pot um, without needing uh, to tie the wire and it's going to sit straight up. So that would involve a lot of root work. But because I'm reporting out of time uh, in a in a imperfect time I'm not going to do it this time so 
it's a little bit if I'm doing a proper repart I'm going to prune off a lot more roots but um, since it's not the perfect time I don't want to prune too much root so I'm simply going to jam the root in here so if this were a proper time repot I would just cut off all these roots under and make the root plane flat at this point and every any root that's touching the edge of the pot I'm going to cut off but um, since this is not an ideal time for repotting I'm not going to do that right now at this time keeping in mind my front of the tree and uh, just jam the root in for a little bit and at least this time next time when I got a proper chance to repot I'm going to do it properly I do believe that this tree can take it and take this reporting. Just going to keep filling the front and the back. Since so I'm going to change hand. One hand I'm going to keep it stable and uh, pot it in the right angle. The other hand I'm going to fill in the soil. Start poking the soil into the the roots for a little bit. I'm going to try to send the soil into the root base. So I'm poking the soil literally pushing them into the the space between the roots the soil would need to have a good contact with the root if there is air pocket 
inside that will not be very good for the roots so you can see it looks like a lot of soil but once I poke it in it's going to sink in and fill the space in between roots and it looks like the soil is sinking or disappearing but it's just filling into the space between roots better Now the tree can kind of stand by itself. Just going to fill in the rest of the soil. angle is a little bit off so I'm lifting the tree a little bit so that it's parted in the right angle Okay, now I can tie the tree in.
just tighten it slightly and then uh, then the tree should not be able to fall out of the pot. Finish filling the whole thing in. Filling it right up to the root base. And this should be okay, I think. Okay. This would be Let's see. This would be the front of the tree and uh, I did something very stupid again I uh, forgot to bring my watering can and uh, my moss so I'm going to grab my watering can and uh, probably the screen will just freeze for a little bit but I'm going to come back pretty soon
can continue. Um, we're raining a lot uh, these several days. We almost get a little bit of rain every day, so I have some rain water laying around and I can water the plant with this rain water because it is the first reporting um, we are supposed to water until the the water that come out from the bottom of the container stop uh, being muddy um, but that would be quite a while so I'm just going to water until the water come out of from the bottom which is not enough and then do the mossing and then after the video, I'm going to do more watering. Okay, water has stopped to come out from the bottom, I believe. Okay. The water is, of course, still a little bit muddy, but I think it would be fine. Um, I pick up some moss. From the wild. By wild, I simply mean some stone and pavement and things like that. And they're actually pretty good moss. And um, I have several types of moss. This is almost a very nice sphagnum moss. So I have some of these and there are some that's very puffy, nice puffy moss and uh, so I'm going to put on some puffy moss, uh, it's a little bit too fat, too puffy, so I'm going to, from the bottom I'm going to trim some of the mud off so that it's a little bit thinner it's just that the moss is a little bit too thick so i'm going to trim the bottom off a little bit but um i would need to be careful not to trim too much or the moss may just fall apart and uh, also have some sphagnum moss this is like playing a puzzle 
I have several type of moss. Mm. I think the sphagnum moss are so tall, but it's very good for the health of the plant. So uh, I'm going to put it near the back of the tree. It's not going to be perfect mossing, but. Just hope that it would be fine. Okay, I have several type of moss. In this moss, you have some grass-like feature to it. I think this is very interesting. So I'm going to place it near the front so that people can see that grass-like feature. I have some of these moss, which looks like little flowers. Um, there is one type of moss that's not good for the plant. I hope this is not the one. I think it's called Irish moss, but I hope this is not Irish moss. But it's pretty. If it turned out to be bad, I would. we can easily remove it later it's a little bit too thick so i'm going to remove a little bit of the bottom part of the moss i didn't remove too much Okay. Mm. So the ideal case is the ideal scenario is when you are applying moss you almost the end results almost look like you've never applied them it's just has always been there of course i'm not going to achieve that um, but the ideal scenario is that people cannot see you've applied the moss. It's the seamlessness that is looking after. You can tuck the moss in a little bit so that it, between moss pad and moss pad you don't have any seam between them and you don't have any soil that's showing because I'm not professional, so I'm obviously not going to do it perfectly, but the idea is, the central ideas about mossing is natural, the naturalness. So 
after you apply the moss, people will not be able to distinguish that the moss wasn't here to begin with. That would be ideal. The this is a very puffy moss again. With these moss, I'm going to need to prune the moss pretty soon, I think. They're just growing so nicely. All sorts of moss. Uh, closer to the trunk, I would like to put in some sphagnum moss because it's good for the roots. Just going to tuck that in. I don't have too good of a root flare yet. So it is when the moss get too close to the trunk, it's going to block some of the trunk. The view of the trunk, but um, I'm not too worried about it at this moment. Still have a little bit of moss that I can apply here. Okay. Not really perfect mossing, but um, We can give them some time to grow and uh, become better. But let's see. Uh, right now, it looks quite good to me. So I'm going to... Let's take a look. People complain about my background has too many stuff on it and people cannot see the tree. So this is my tree and um, so the pot is a little bit oversized for the tree right now but um i think it's fine i'm trying to see the tree from the eye level you can see the pot the color of the pot is chosen for the black trunk of the tree because the color of the tree as well as the movement of the trunk both the the color and movement of the trunks are very prominent in this tree. And uh, 
it's probably the most valuable part of the tree. So the part is chosen to be similar to that trunk so that people would be focusing on the trunk. And um, so the, the, the part is, but in terms of the style, it is still a little bit in contrast with the tree. The tree is so rugged and the um, part is just so smooth. Um, ideally, one day, if I have access to a more rough and black part, that would be nice. And also, the part is currently a little bit too large for the tree and we can solve that in two ways one of two ways one is to let the tree grow establish roots once it has enough root do a root pruning and try to reduce the size a little bit maybe in the end we have a part that's about half the uh, depth of the current part, I think the size, the width of the part is probably okay, but it's too deep. But this is a, still a training part, although this is a bonsai part, but it's still a training part for this tree. So what I want is next year, hopefully, the tree will grow a lot since it has been transferred, transplanted into the perfect bonsai soil. And uh, hopefully we are going to see the root fill the pot very soon. Uh, and uh, then we can do more root work and get the root plane flat. Uh, as you saw today, the root plane is still not flat at all, and um, but since we are potting, repotting out of time, uh, I just keep most a lot of the roots so that the tree can has a good chance of survive can have a good chance of survive survival and um, and uh, further work may be done next year for the, the after the tree recover from two major operation one is pruning uh, this fall and then um, the reparting out of season in the in the middle of the winter but I still hope that this tree, would survive and um, continue. We will continue to see this tree develop. You can see it's. I'm simply currently simply just enjoying the tree. It's looking so nice in its first bonsai pot, which means this is no longer a pre bonsai. And uh, it's a proper bonsai now. So hopefully I'm going to make it to our local club show and they are going to have a professional photographer to pho photograph the trees that's in the show. So that's something that I'm very much looking forward to and uh, hopefully I can show you a good photograph later. I'm going to photograph it uh, too, but it's probably not as good as a professional photographer. I'm going to take a good photo of this tree and send it to the show. I think the show is completely online. so. 
the photographer would photograph the tree and they are going to send out electronic photo of the tree and uh, people are going to view it on Facebook or something like that. But uh, I'm pretty much looking forward to the show. Um, and um, I think um, that's it for this video. And uh, I so I want to say Happy New Year and 2021 we would still have some difficult time ahead before everybody can be hopefully vaccinated and protected against the corona virus and gradually i hope that we all gradually return to a, a relatively normal life in 2021 and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, I will see you next time. Take care.